there, folks! Sergeant Pitcher here with a new episode of Things That Make Me Feel Like a Dick! If you have a problem with foul language, then you might as well pack your bags and move along, little girl! Because this episode is so full of toilet talk that my fucking butt cheeks are about to explode! So sit back, strap in, and put a diaper on your face! Because R. Kelly's here with a full bladder, and this shit's about to splatter! What's going on, guys? So the other day I'm skulking around Facebook like most of us tend to do on a pretty regular basis. And I came across some pictures of a friend's vacation. And I always see people going places where everyone goes. You know, the typical vacation spots. And I can't help but wonder to myself why people consider that a vacation. My idea of a vacation is to get away from all the fucking mouth breathers of the world. And relaxing. How can anyone possibly relax when they're surrounded by people that they don't know, who are all trying to keep ridiculously busy vacation schedules, to see a bunch of places that they could just look up online? What the fuck? Uh, yeah. As we all know, Facebook over the years has gone through many changes. Most of these changes are intended to improve the service that is Facebook. But most of these changes? Just make me feel like a dick. I remember a time when I could just go on Facebook realizing I had a couple of messages, read the message, realize that I didn't give enough of a fuck to message that person back, and just move on with my day. Those were the days. Not anymore! Ever since Facebook added that godforsaken feature that lets the person know whenever their message has been seen, I'm constantly forgetting that I can no longer just ignore someone if they send me a pointless message. Which in turn makes me feel like a dick. I never even remember that that feature exists because it lets them know, but it doesn't let me know at all that they've seen that I've seen it. So when I'm merely trying to ignore a message out of pure disinterest, I have to deal with later realizing that they are well aware of the fact that I ignored them. It's basically like me saying, Screw you! And the time it took for you to clickety-clack your fingertips away on your keyboard to send me a message that merely said, Hey, if you're gonna take up a federal fucking case every time I don't respond to a message like that, maybe take a little more damn time to write a message worth reading. If you sent me a message that was something like this, maybe I wouldn't get so fucking bored the moment I open it. Hey dude, sorry about not being around lately. I was reading this book that LeVar Burton suggested a while ago, and while I was reading it, it made me realize that there is much more to this world than country hookers dressed like diseased clowns and Nutella and peanut butter sandwiches. Wait, fuck that. There's nothing better than Nutella. That stuff is the shit. Non-diseased clown hookers would also be a better option. Anyway, I decided to buy a farm and raise those cool goats that faint when you scare them. Saw a neat video of them on YouTube and thought, holy fuck, I need to raise those. Things were going good for a couple weeks until the goat fucker started showing himself around the farm. I only knew he was around because I noticed strange sounds out in the barn, and the goats would faint if they saw phallic objects. Weird. Anyway, I'm just rambling on about my problems. What's going on with you? Now you see, that's how you gather someone's attention with a Facebook message. All in the same email, this young man brings up such interesting topics as LeVar Burton, country hookers, peanut butter and Nutella sandwiches, and even mentions goat fuckers. Thanks for the email, Jeffrey. I look forward to hearing from you again soon. And another thing, why the hell does Facebook allow people to see that I've edited what I've already said? The view edit history button. If I make a mistake during a comment, it's very clear that I'm editing this to avoid looking like a dickbag. Yet they just put that button right out there for everyone. Huh, you wanna see what they actually meant to say? Before they realized they were being a fucking asshole who can't spell? That's like being able to see all the mistakes that your girlfriend has made and finding out that she probably had a penis once. You don't need to know that I can't spell the word fibromyalgia. You're just supposed to think that I'm an articulate adult for using the word. And I know most of you are saying, But Michael, you can just delete it and rewrite your message. 
Yeah, you could. Unless you're in an argument with somebody and you just realized that four comments ago you said something really stupid or you made a mistake and misspelled a word. I will give you a situational scenario. Prepare yourself to walk down a road that many of you have probably been. Let's say you're on the internet and you're trying to hash it out with some twat who wants to have a verbal boxing match. And everyone knows that by the time the argument ensues, you're probably shooting piss and vinegar out of your fingertips as you type back to him with the moxie of a 12-year-old Asian taking a math test just to make him look stupid. And then it happens. You realize that you've made a mistake four comments back. You misspelled a word. And now you've just given him ammunition for the argument. You can just edit that, right? Sure, but he's still gonna see that you did it because of this stupid fucking function on Facebook, and he's probably gonna jam it down your throat in his rebuttal. You're fucked. Thanks, Facebook. Let's go to topic number two. <laughs> topic number two is marriage. But not just any old marriage. Marriage to lunch ladies, my friends. Am I the only person that feels like a dick for thinking that being married to a lunch lady would be a total fucking nightmare? Have you ever really seen a lunch lady that didn't look like the bottom of a hobbit foot? Because I haven't. They don't exist. You could start out looking like Emma Stone and the moment you walk into that school and you fill out that job application to become a lunch lady, you start to go through a gremlin-like transformation that would scare the shit out of even the likes of Norman Bates. And they already cook all day long. What makes you think they're gonna wanna come home and make a nice, wonderful family dinner after dealing with 300 plus little dickheads all day? We all know scientifically that children age people considerably, which is probably why lunch ladies look the way they do. Have you ever even seen a lunch lady that looks all sultry and wonderful and sexy? And she's all, oh sweetheart, you want another dollop of mashed potatoes? No, because they don't fucking exist. They all look like this. Oh, hello, sweetheart. Do you want another dollop of cream on your mashed potatoes? How about a kissy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a handsome young man you are. Here's an extra spoonful of pudding for you. Ah, oh, gee willikers, Mrs. Wet Trap. I sure do appreciate the extra pudding. But well, I really wanted cake for dessert today. Yeah, well, I could really use another bleach job on my brown butter cutter, but we all can't get what we want now, can we? What's a brown butter cutter? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Lunch ladies, you're fucking creepy. 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 Lunch ladies are about two steps away from becoming the wicked witch of any direction on a compass. <sighs> After all that, makes me feel like a dick.